chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Today's the last uh, Sunday of the month, and so tonight we'll have one of our men preach. David Court Jr. is going to be preaching tonight, so you want to be here for that. Um, I wanted to let you know ahead of time that uh, in the month of August, my wife and I have the privilege of celebrating our 50th wedding anniversary. And we're excited about that. And uh, in, in, uh, in celebration of that, we are going to take a trip. And uh, we're going to head out west. We're going to go to, uh, we're going to go and visit, we're going to go and visit the Vogelins out in Driggs, Idaho. We're going to visit uh, the, um, uh, yeah, I, the Whitakers, thanks. I just went blank. The Whitakers in uh, Pocatello. And I'm going to be preaching there on, on that Sunday night. And then, uh, and we're driving, we're driving out. And you say, you're nuts. Well, yeah, didn't you, you're just figuring that out? I mean, you know, but uh, no, I, I look forward to it. Um, these last two years, there's been very little driving and uh, I'm ready to get behind the wheel and take off and have a trip. Uh, and uh, so we'll, we'll uh, we're gonna, a after that, that, that following week, we're gonna be going to pastor school, which will be out in uh, uh, Boise, Idaho, at Treasure Valley Baptist Church. And then after that, we're going to head, uh, we're gonna go to, to uh, Salt Lake City for, uh, for the weekend, just south of there, I think it is. And no, we're not gonna go to church there at the Mormon <laughs> Tabernacle, okay? That's not why we're going. Uh, but, uh, but then we will uh, head toward that week, that next week we'll head toward the Grand Canyon. We're looking forward to that and spend some time there. And then after that, we're going to go all the way down to Texas and hopefully by that time, uh, meet our newest grandchild. And uh, my wife is especially excited about that. A uh, little bit more excited, I think, than I am, although I am kind of excited about it. Uh, but, uh, you know, they just go goo goo ga ga, puke and spit up and <laughs> poop in their pants. You know, I, that's just not, not my idea of fun. I like them when, when they start getting older and they can do things. But anyway, uh, and then, uh, then we'll, we'll head home after that. That means we're going to be gone for about three and a half weeks, almost four. Uh, we're leaving on the 1st of August and taking, uh, taking off and coming back uh, on the uh, right around sometime around the 26th of, of August. So that's almost a whole month. <clears throat> I am just so thankful that we have men in our church that not only are capable but are willing to, to preach in situations like that when I'm gone. And, uh, and honestly, uh, th it was a decision that I did not... I uh, hesitate, I didn't flinch, I didn't get nervous about it, because we've got good men who preach the Word of God faithfully around here, and I'm, I appreciate that, I really do. There's not, not a lot of churches that have the kind of resources that we have with the size that we have, and uh, uh, it's, just, it's just a blessing. So uh, I, I, look, I look forward to that, and I said all that because we've got one of our men preaching tonight. And, and during that time, I've asked, uh, I've asked Brother Rich Overton, who is uh, Aaron, was Aaron Ho Overton's son. He, Aaron Overton pastored for years over in Baldwinsville at uh, Temple Baptist Church. And he's gone into evangelism. He still works a, a, a job, but he's, he also uh, does evangelism on the weekends and various weeks. And a uh, good man. He's going to be here for the second, I think the second Sunday that I'm going and uh, you'll, you'll get a blessing from him. Well, okay, by now you should be at Matthew chapter 11, hopefully. And if not, you need to look on the Bible with the person next to you. Let's all stand together. Matthew chapter 11. And Jesus is, is just done uh, really rebuking some cities and rebuking some individuals and people. And one of the things that I've noticed that you see a lot of this in Scripture that when God gets done telling you the hard stuff, then he gives you some hope. 
And he doesn't just tell you the hard stuff and leave it. We've noticed that in the book of Hosea on Wednesday nights that we're studying. That yes, there's a lot of really harsh rebukes in there. But when the rebukes are all done, God always gives them a glimmer of hope and always shows them that, look, you can change this situation. Uh, you can change your relationship with me if you, if you just repent. And in this particular case, he's given, given some, some special hope. Uh, look with me in verses 28, 29, and 30. It says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, we're so thankful that we serve a God who cares for us, who loves us. Uh, when it's necessary to give us rebuke, uh, you peel the paint off the wall sometimes. Uh, we're thankful that you love us enough to rebuke us, that you love us enough to chasten us. We're also thankful that you give us hope, that you, you tell us how to rectify those things. You tell us how to find peace and how to find rest. And uh, Lord, we pray that as we take a look at your word and, and, and uh, Lord, specifically the words of the Lord Jesus Christ when he was speaking about finding rest for our souls. Uh, help us, Lord, to, to get an understanding of how th things can be tumultuous on the outside. And uh, there can be all kinds of turmoil going on, and yet on the inside, it could be like still waters, and it can be peaceful but only through Jesus Christ. And uh, so, Father, we pray that you'd give us wisdom and understanding as we look at your words. Speak to our hearts today, for it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And all God's people said, amen. amen. You may be seated. I want to look at this morning how to find rest for your soul. Um, you know, we live in a, we live in a, pressure man society. Everybody's in a hurry and they're in, oftentimes in a hurry to go nowhere and working hard to accomplish nothing really of, of eternal value most of the time. And, and you've heard me say often uh, within the last, I don't know, two years in particular, we live in perilous times. And, and, and I believe we do. Uh, uncertain times. But it's, it's because we're living in perilous times and because we're living in an uncertain times and things can, can change like we saw this, this week with Roe versus Wade, things can change even in society at the drop of a hat, it seems. Uh, the, the Lord uh, is always there to offer us rest and he's, he's there to offer us rest for our soul. Um, if you need rest, doesn't it make sense to go to the person who created rest? And, of course, that's God himself. Uh, Genesis 2.2 says, And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. He created the, the heavens and the earth and all that's therein in six days. And then on the seventh day, it says that he rested. Uh, God is the, is the creator of and the author of rest. Have you ever noticed when you're reading through the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and one thing that I, I have taken note of is that Jesus was never late for anything. He was always at the right place. He was always at the right place at the right time. If he was supposed to be somewhere, he got there. Uh, the, only, the only time you could find on purpose that he delayed and was late was when uh, the, he got word that Lazarus was sick, and uh, he allowed him to die so that they could put him in a tomb, so that he could go to the tomb, so that he could say, Lazarus, come forth, and Lazarus rose from the dead. And God got more glory out of that than had he just come and just healed him from his sick bed. But, but uh, uh, God, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, our, our Savior, uh, was always on time and never late, and always made himself available. Um, you know, when, when someone had a need, he put other things on hold, still got those things done, 
but made sure that he attended the, the needs of others. And so if there's ever anybody that we're going to go to, to, to learn about rest, it's going to be Jesus Christ. And there are, there are four, four things that he tells us that we need to attend to in order to come to that point of rest. And he says, he says in verse, verse 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. First thing that he says that we have to do is we have to come. We have to come. You know, uh, that's, that's true uh, when it comes to salvation. Uh, before I got saved, I did not have rest in my soul. Uh, you've heard my testimony. My mom died when I was eight. And so death hit me at a very early age. And I thought about death at a very early age. As a, as a teenager, uh, other teenagers would make jokes and kid about people dying and so forth. I never thought they were funny because I saw death and took it seriously early in life. And, but, but there was a real unrest in my soul uh, because I did not have assurance that when I died and I knew that it was going to come, I just didn't know when, with my mom, my mom was 49 years old when she passed away. That's young. I mean, that's really young. Uh, you look at, at the disparity between that and my father. My father was 93 when he passed away. My mom was, was 49. And uh, regardless of whether you live long or live short, death is coming. And if you don't have that thing about eternal life settled, then there's some unrest in your soul. And, and Jesus said, in order to have rest, you've got to first come. Uh, you can't be saved by doing. You can't be saved by, by being anything. You can only be saved by coming, by coming to God. And when, when we come, when I came to Christ, the Bible says that, and when you came to Christ, the Bible says he made you a new creature. It says if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You pass from death unto life. Uh, you were dead in trespasses and sins, and then you became alive in Jesus Christ. Uh, when, you, when you come to him, he forgives you. And he forgives you not just of some of your sin, but he forgives you of all your sin. Your past sin, your present sin, even the sins that you haven't committed yet. And then when you come to Christ, he gives you, he gives you his righteousness. And the reason why uh, we know that we can go to heaven when we die is because our sins are forgiven and we now have the righteousness of Jesus Christ. He has imputed that righteousness. In other words, put it to our account. Uh, he has imputed that righteousness to us who have trusted him as Savior. And, and he's the one that did it all. You did nothing when you got saved other than come and believe. You come, you believe, you receive, and he does all the work. And uh, uh, when you come, you don't, you don't come to a church. Uh, you might get saved in church, but it's not church that does the saving. Uh, you, you, don't, you don't come to, uh, you know, some guru that's going to help you. Uh, you come to the person of God himself. You come to him, and he gives you eternal life. Uh, who, who is it that needs to come? Well, uh, Scripture says all ye that labor and are heavy laden, people that are la laboring, uh, they're working to get to heaven. Uh, you don't have to work to get to heaven. Uh, the work's been done. The work's been finished. Jesus said, it is finished on that cross. And he paid the total price. You can't add anything to it. You can't take anything from it. Uh, he says, all you that labor and are heavy laden. Heavy laden with what? Well, with sins, with, with worry, with guilt, with disappointments, uh, with troubles, with cares. In other words, anyone and everyone can come to the Lord Jesus Christ and, and find that salvation. But you won't, you know, one of the things I've learned over, the, over, over time is that you, you, you won't come unless you realize that you have a need. And uh, you may be here this morning, you may be hearing the sound of my voice this morning, and, and uh, you don't know for sure, if, and you're not absolutely positive 
If you're to die today, you go to heaven. And one of the things that, that bothers me is that there's some folks that are in that state that don't care. Because until a person cares, you'll never get saved. You've got to care about it. It's got, it's got, it's got to bother you. And uh, you've got to realize that you have a need. Because God forces salvation on no one. He, he doesn't make anybody get saved. We have to come. We have to come to him. And what will he give you? Well, he'll give you rest. Uh, he'll give you hope. He'll give you peace that passes all understanding that you did not have before you came to Christ. And uh, he'll give you a, a, a quietness. He'll give you a peace of mind. He'll give you tranquility. He'll give you a, a freedom from sin that you never had before you got saved. Uh, that, that rest is described in Scripture as the peace of God. Uh, go, go with me. Keep your finger here, but go, go over to the book of Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. And I, I love that the whole first few verses of Romans 5. Because it describes salvation and then it goes into the Christian life and how God teaches us things once we get saved and how he sheds his love abroad in our hearts. Uh, but particularly verse 1. Verse 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. When a person comes to Christ by faith and trusts him and him alone as their Savior, they get peace with God. Before that, according to Romans chapter 5, we were at enmity with God. We were at loggerheads with God. But uh, once a person trusts Christ as Savior, that peace that passes all understanding uh, keeps our hearts and minds through, through Christ Jesus. Now, if, if you're already saved, uh, we've got to come to him for rest on a day-by-day -day basis. We're not talking about eternal rest now. We're talking about the, the rest that comes through a, a, a peaceful heart, not, not just peace with God, but peace of God. And there's a difference there. The peace with God is what you get at salvation. The peace of God is what you get on a day-by-day -day basis. Uh, I don't know if you've ever experienced this or not. I, I've experienced it quite a few times in my life where there have been situations that outwardly have been extremely troublesome. Uh, it, it could be a, uh, just a, a difficult situation in, in my personal life. It could be, and I, I've had situations where, where people have been very, very upset with me for whatever reason. I had a, a situation one time where a guy literally got this far from my, you know, this far from my face and was just screaming at the top of his lungs, which I don't understand why he was doing that because it was just him and me in the office. And I'm, I, back then I wasn't hard of hearing at all. Uh, and uh, maybe that's why I am today, I don't know. But, uh, and, but I remember when that, when that particular one, I've had many others that are similar happen, and you have the peace of God on the inside. You got his rest. And it, it doesn't bother you. It doesn't bother you. I mean, you don't like the fact that someone is doing that. You don't like the outward situation, possibly, that is in turmoil. But, but while everything else is just kind of topsy-turvy on the inside, you have peace and you have rest. And that's something you can't do with your own strength. You can't do it with your own power. Only God can give you that kind of rest. But we have to come to him. We first have to come. We have to, we have to veil ourselves of God. And secondly, he, he tells us to take. He says, don't just come. But when you come, he says, there's something you need to take. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Uh, the second thing he says we need to do is to take, take his yoke. Now, what's a yoke? It's an instrument that was used for two oxen in order to work together. And it, it, it uh, connected the two oxen. It was a piece of wood, and oftentimes there was metal involved as well. 
and uh, it, it, uh, it connected those two together so that they could work. And in order to get into the yoke, one of the things that the ox always had to do was to first bow his head so that he could fit his, his uh, head into the, into the yoke. That, that indicates that before we're going to get peace, we've got to get some humility. We've got to be humble before God. And uh, boy, the, the longer I, I, I live the Christian life, the, the, the more I see the importance of a humble spirit. The uh, Bible says, he giveth grace to the humble. Uh, there's not a day that goes by when you don't desperately need the grace of God in your life. Uh, yes, you, you're saved by grace and, and that saving grace, but you need, to be, you need to have living grace in order to get through this life. And, and uh, God gives that grace unto the humble. The Bible says he resists, he resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. And uh, it's so important for us to have, have a humble heart. Uh, Christ himself humbled himself so that he could give us eternal life. He left heaven, came down here. He's not asking us to do something that he hasn't done himself. And we're to humble ourselves. Um, whenever two oxen were together in a yoke, uh, there was always one who was the lead ox, and then there was the following ox. Well, uh, he says, Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Get in the yoke with the Savior. Now, that means that he's the leader. And when you get in his yoke, you're implying that, listen, it's not my way that's important, it's your way. It's not my desires, it's your desires. It's not my pleasure that I'm looking for, it's your pleasure. I, I'm willing to get in the yoke with you, to do the work uh, with you, but uh, you call the shots. And in order to do that, you got to die to self. In order to do that, you got to deny yourself. And uh, and and and. and People that are, are proud and that are selfish uh, can't, can't get into that yoke because they lack humility. It's important to be humble before God. Now, when you look at this thing, and he's talking about rest, and he says, take my yoke upon you. Well, you know what a yoke's for. A yoke's for work. And that sounds contradictory. It says, if you want, if you want to have rest then put on a yoke and go to work. <laughs> it just doesn't sound like those two are compatible. But, but before you got saved, you were yoked to the world. You were yoked to sin. Uh, you were yoked to the flesh. You were yoked to the devil. And now you've been set free from, from those connections. You are no longer alive to sin. You're dead to sin. And, and that, you know, you think about it, that yoke that you had before salvation, that was neither, uh, ne neither easy nor light. You know, people say, well, it's, it's tough uh, to live the Christian life. There are, there are difficult things in Christianity. There's no doubt about it. There are diff difficult things in life, period. There's no doubt about it. But the Bible makes it real clear that when you're doing things God's way, his yoke is easy and his burden is light and he makes it easier for you and because he's the one that helps, helps you carry the load. And uh, the Bible says in Proverbs 13, 15, says the way of transgressors is hard. It's difficult. It's, it's tough. Uh, man, I'd, I'd much rather uh, get into the yoke, no matter how, how difficult it may, may become, I'd rather get into the yoke with Jesus Christ than to be left out there all by myself without grace, without help, without mercy. And, and uh, uh, because the way of transgressors is hard and it'll wear you down. Uh, the way of transgressors is hard. It, there's stress, there's complications, there's uh, consequences with sin. But when you're working for and with the Savior, and you're allowing him to call the shots, it makes all the difference in the world. And obedience brings peace. Obedience brings rest. And it, it, uh, it takes care of uh, that turmoil that, uh, that is in your heart. Disobedience always brings turmoil. 
always brings a lack of peace. So he says, come unto me, and then he says, take my yoke. By the way, uh, what, are you, what are you doing for God? Uh, if you're saved, uh, God doesn't expect you just to be saved and sit. He expects you to do, to do something. Now, you can't do it in the flesh. You can't do it in your own strength. But whatever it is that he would have you to do, you need to get involved and do the work of God. Uh, Brother Jerry Sutek, one of our missionaries, he's a missionary to the Philippines, wrote a, wrote a, a I guess it's a book. It's online. You can get it for free on his website. And uh, it, the name of the, the, the book that he wrote was called Life is Ministry. And he goes through and shows scripture after scripture after scripture where everyone is called to ministry. Now, you know, not everyone is called to be a preacher or an evangelist or a... Uh, or a uh, missionary or, or whatever, but everyone is called to minister and everyone is called to ministry. And, and the, the take that he, that he takes on that, that, entire, that entire book is, uh, is that life is ministry. Life is ministry. Find what it is God would have you to do and, and make sure that you accomplish it and that you do it. Did you get in the yoke? And there is just real peace knowing that you're right smack dab in the middle of God's will, doing what God would have you to do, pleasing the Lord in your life and in, in, in the things that you do. And that, and that by itself will give you some rest. And then the, the third thing that he, that he says to do, he says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. And I think those two are, are integrally connected. He says, take my yoke upon you. And then he says, and learn of me. As you work for God, you're going to learn some things about God that you wouldn't have learned otherwise. He's talking here about not just studying and learning what the Bible says about God, but seeing what, who and what God is and what kind of strength he can give you experientially. And that takes Time. That just takes time. Uh, you know, it, it, it's something that, that uh, we spend a lifetime doing, working for the Lord. The more you labor with Christ in the work, the more you learn of him. And uh, you get consumed with God instead of getting consumed with yourself. One of the things that we looked at uh, in our Sunday school class, we're starting the last week, started the book of Titus. And... Uh, Whenever the Apostle Paul talks about his ministry, talks about his apostleship, before he mentions, ever mentions that he's an apostle, he says he's a servant. He's a servant. And he, he, had, he had a servant's heart. And uh, uh, the thing that kept his, his uh, attitude in check and kept him from getting full of pride of the fact that he was an apostle born out of due season uh, was the fact that he always looked at himself as a servant. And, uh, you know, when, when, when you determine to serve uh, and you serve with somebody, you, you find yourself taking on the characteristics of those people. I, I can remember, uh, you know, I, I served with Pastor Keck for about 50, almost 15 years out in Green Bay. You know, one of the things that, that, that uh, used to drive me nuts was the guy used to preach and take his glasses off. And, and I thought, man, put your glasses back on. Will you, will you? I don't need to be looking at those things hanging. You're going to drop those. And, 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 and I, 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 would, I would watch that. Then now that I've been in the ministry for a while, guess what I do? From time to time, I take my glasses off. Where did I learn that? Well, I learned that from that guy out there that led me the wrong way. No, he didn't lead me the wrong way. But uh, uh, because you work with somebody, and I better put them back on. Uh, because you work with somebody, you, you start taking up their characteristics. Well, you know what? When you, when you work with God, you learn things about God. If all you do is sit and study and all you do is think, but you don't do anything with what God has given you, then you don't have the opportunity to learn. The more we, we work with God, the more we learn about God. In Psalm 111 and verse 10, 
says a good understanding have all they that do his commandments. The more we do and the more that we, that we, uh, uh, we uh, do good works and work the ministry that God has given to us, the more we not only know some, some, and have some understanding, but we know and have understanding about the God whom we serve. And then the last thing that the Bible says that we ought to do is not only to come and not only take and not only learn of Christ, but last of all, what we'll find. And what we'll find is we'll find rest. It says, take, verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. You don't find rest by seeking it. You find rest by coming, by taking, and by learning. And the, the rest here is that peace of God which passeth all understanding. And you take God's burdens, you take the things that, uh, that he has, he says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You pick up his burdens and he'll make sure yours are carried. He'll make sure that your heart is at peace and that your heart is at rest. Again, we're living in very uncertain times. Uh, this, this, last, uh, this last year, any of you that have uh, IRAs or any kind of retirement plans, bye, a lot of them have just uh, take, put on wings and, and flown away. And uh, I looked at my last statement and I just, oh, I, I couldn't believe how much was, was lost just in a very short period of time. But you know what, that's life. Things like that are gonna happen outwardly. What about on the inside? You know, that's, that's, why, that's why the Bible says, casting all your care upon him. Why? For he careth for you. The one that cares for you is the one that says, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Uh, God has a desire, and his desire is to give us that rest and give us that peace. Now, again, you might, you might, be, you might, have, uh, you might be tired outwardly. Uh, you might be physically tired. That's, that's fine. That's dandy. Uh, I understand. You know, that, that comes. But in the midst of the tiredness and in the midst of the tumult, what's going on on the inside? Is there rest on the inside or is there turmoil? If there's turmoil, and I, I, I speak this from personal experience, if there's turmoil on the inside, it's because something's not resolved. I haven't given something to God. I haven't humbled myself in an area that I need to. I have not been involved in the work that God wants me to be involved in. Something is not resolved. It's never God's fault if you don't have inward rest. If you don't have rest for your souls, it's always our fault. Because we haven't come, we haven't taken, we haven't learned, and we haven't found that rest that only Jesus Christ can give. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray this morning that you may work upon our hearts and help us to see the importance of, of having that rest. And if, if something is off on the inside, and maybe we've got a smile on our face, and everybody thinks that everything's going just fine with us, but we know better. We know that on the inside there is, there is unrest. There is uncertainty. Uh, Lord, it's because we have not come to you and we've maybe not cast all our care upon you and taken your yoke upon us and found rest. Father, I pray that you would uh, work on our hearts this morning. There might be someone here this morning or under the sound of my voice that does not know Christ as Savior. They have, they have eternal turmoil. They don't know for sure if they die today that they go to heaven to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that today you would work on their hearts and help them to see 
They're a sinner on their way to hell, and the only way they can go to heaven is by coming to Christ. Lord, you've already done all the work. All, you, all they have to do is simply repent and trust Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and believe on you and trust you for forgiveness of all their sins. And you'll, you'll give them that eternal rest that you've promised to those who trust in you. And then there may be someone here this morning who's saved, but there's, there's something just not right on the inside. I pray, God, you speak their heart, help them to see what, what it is they've not done yet. Again, maybe it's a, maybe it's a point of humbling that needs to be done. Uh, Lord, uh, maybe it's a point of not getting into the oak and, and not doing the work that you've called them to do. Father, whatever it might be, I pray that you would speak to our hearts this morning. And God, give us that, give us that rest that only comes by coming to you. We pray your blessings upon the invitation. Speak to hearts. And as you do, may we say yes to you. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Let's all stand.